Just love that ending. Just love that ending. <laughs> it's creepy, I know. <laughs> What's up, Alex Dunlap? Oh, Chad Hastings. So good to see you, brother. We got on war with the... I don't know if we can detail what's going on with him. It looks like he's got a pretty stress, pretty stressful morning going on there, though. Hey, it, you know what? This is just like when Jeff Ketchum was dealing with some stuff at the house a week or so ago. Everything's good. We won't go into the details because it's, you know, Anwar's details to go into. But everybody's good. Just got some things he's dealing with today. So uh, <laughs> I'm jumping in once again. Yesterday, I jumped in for Alex. Today, I'll jump in for Anwar, just like they've jumped in for me. And, you know, we're, we're, we're ready to go. We're just uh, we're, we're trying to trying to be there for each other. That's it's what been, friends are for. It, it, it's, it's been a kind of off kilter week because I'm I've missed like three shows this week, too, with different stuff. And then, you know, Anwar and I have only done one show together this whole entire week because I Right. Kid stuff. I, I I had kid stuff on uh, Monday, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday. Some last minute stuff yesterday, and then on more with the last minute stuff today. But dude, we got a we got a ton to get to, man. There's a there was a jam packed war room uh, over on Orange Bloods last night. So um, yeah, man, let's uh, it's uh, I don't even know where to start. Well, I think that is uh, that that it's a great place to start, and I'll just go ahead and and we'll remind everybody. We'll throw up a little code here uh, for everybody: orangebloods.com. Hello, uh, there's your QR code. Go ahead and scan that uh, and jump on in there. War Room Night is Thursday night, and uh, Alex, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we could get into. Um, but I know the offensive line stuff jumped out to you as it always does. Nobody breaks down the offensive line, uh, I think, better than you do. And it is one of the most important parts of any football team. So uh, we put we put Cam Williams on the, the thumbnail and title today. And I think it is worth talking about. And to one of our chatters, I love when – we, we'll throw up the word update and what we mean is just, hey, the latest that, you know, the latest that the Orange Bloods guys are hearing and all that stuff. But a lot of times we get this response on a chat. Ooh, I hope this is good news. Text guy too. This is good news. This is good news. Uh, Alex, give us your updated thoughts on uh, on what what uh, what we're hearing about Cam Williams. OK, so um, from the war room last night. Anwar had the note about there's a bunch of notes from the war room, but um, I guess exactly what I'm, I, I want to maybe I'll, I'll just kind of this Cam Williams section. Maybe I can just kind of read it because I don't want to mischaracterize what, because th this is on wars reporting. And since mm -hmm. he's not here, I don't want to mischaracterize what he said. OK, so he says Cam Williams is viewed as an upgrade over Christian Jones. Williams was not the starter last year because he had too many brain farts according to someone close to the situation. The good news for Longhorn fans and staff members is that Williams has eliminated those mental mistakes. And so the first thing is, is just right off the bat, you're like, dude, an upgrade on Christian Jones? I mean, that's a dude who goes to the um, goes to the Senior Bowl, looks like one of the better players there during the weekend mobile. Um, you know, maybe not one of the better players, Chad, but – did you really consider going into the Senior Bowl week that Christian Jones would be a guy that we talk about as, man, it, like maybe not the, to the top echelon, like the top tier of guys that people were going to come out of that week talking about? It feels like that kind of went to the um, Tyler Guytons of the world and some of these other players, right? But a dude who people were going to say, hey, he might not get out of day two, and that that's kind of, that's kind of hung on through the rest of the deal. Um, I don't know. Like I, I, I wasn't expecting it. I knew that Christian Jones got a lot better last season, but you know, I was still curious, you know, stacking him up versus the best of the best, as far as the upperclassmen in college football that he was going to really stand. Am I wrong in my perception of that? It's like, he was good, but I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't sure he was going to look like that. No, I, I, I would agree with you. In fact, I can still see your face when uh, Catch and I had you on the 12 o'clock show. You were live from Mobile. We were talking about kind of what you had seen so far. And the look on your face, the look on Catch's face when you said, hey, guys, Christian Jones is really, you know, mm -hmm. he's really maximizing this opportunity and he's putting himself in a better spot. So I think that is a surprise uh, that certainly was a surprise. And then if you're a Longhorn fan, uh, and obviously, again, Alex, let's make sure we're clarifying for people. We are talking about right tackle here, correct? That is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Camp. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, this is your people. Yeah, that, that's the right tackle. So, right the, tackle. so the extra level for me here, uh, Alex, is if I'm a Texas fan, 
you know, you losing what you're losing on this offensive line, it's not as important as left tackle. We know for right-handed quarterbacks, but right tackle can be a big, big deal, obviously, on an offensive line. Yeah. And to hear these stories about Cam Williams, and we're talking about a third-year guy here, right? A he'd be a third-year junior? Yes. I have that right? Yeah. He, because five. he – yeah, because because he, he burned his red shirt year doing on on a extra point. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> so crazy. Six, six five three sixty is how this big human is listed. Uh, I'd forgotten that he that he went to Duncanville, but out of that big time program, the development is there. This is exactly what you want, Alex. I think if you're a Texas fan, is to know that he's ready to lock that thing down, and it sounds like it. You know, it sounds like already if the coaches are, are talking about, hey, this guy, this guy feels like an, an upgrade to what we had. That's just great news. Well, yeah. And so, right. And so back to what I was saying before I asked you about your opinion about Jones from the senior bowl. The, the, the point of it is, it's like we're talking about a guy who even somewhat unexpectedly to me and to Chad and to catch looks better the senior bowl than we thought. We knew that Christian Jones had an awesome year for Texas last year. Was he going to be as good as the rest of the nation? We didn't. I, I wasn't sure, but he ended up like he kind of was, right? And so you not only have Christian Jones having his, you know, dude, this is like the halcyon year of 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 Christian Jones. Like the 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 single thing that you point to and you say, and you say that right there is what Kyle Flood development looks like. That thing right there. What 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 happened with Christian Jones? being left for dead and then coming back to become this, that is what you point to. And you say that this is what Kyle Flood can do in the development department. And you can ask Christian Jones about that. And he'll tell you, that he'll point to himself and say this right here. If, if you're thinking about coming to Texas, listen to me, look at like, look at what he did for me. Look, look, look at the kind of teacher he is. Right. To say that, you know, to, to be able to say that you, you have to have some skins on the wall. And so what I'm the, the whole point is if they're already sent, if, if they're, if on more sources and look, on has got good, really good sources. If you didn't know, if, <laughs> if, if they're, if they're already saying that he's an, that Cam Williams is an upgrade. It's like, here's the, here's the thing about Cam Williams, Chad. And I'll, I'll, I'll have to, as usual, I'd like to give myself just a big pat on the back because, oh, there you because, go. Because I, because I, because I I'll was you, the, um, I give you volleyball clap while you're yeah. patting yourself on the back. Well done. Well done. Uh, the, 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 um, the, the deal with Cam Williams was at first. And I think what the Texas staff thought of Cam Williams at first was remember he was in the class before the really big humans class, right? The 2023 class with all the baby face kind of Connor Strohs and, you know, Andre Kojo and all these dudes, you know, um, that we're going to need some time to develop, right? Cam Williams was in the class before that, committed to Oregon uh, initially. He he was there, committed with Kelvin Banks. Um, and I, I remember I was at D-Hawks. Um, before I even went to D-Hawks camp, I saw him at the Rivals camp in uh, the Dallas area. I think in Arlington is where it was that one year. And I'm, I, I, I've looked at him. I'm like, ah, forget that guy. Like, you know, he's just he's only here because he's big, you know. And I, I, you get used to seeing these guys at camps. You're just like, hey, he's big, but who cares? Like, he's 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 not gonna be he's not gonna be able to move, you know. It's like look look at him. He's there's I can already tell you that he that he can't move, you know. And then you get out there and he and like all of a sudden he starts moving and you're just like, whoa, hold on, wait, he can move, mm -hmm. you know. And you and and you and where you can really see it, Chad is in the um. You know the one-on-one -on -one offensive line versus defensive line pass rush drills, right? Those are drills that are designed for the defensive line to win. I mean, you can take it. I mean, I was never as good as Cam Williams or anything like, but I mean, I I went to camps too, and I played defensive line. And as a defensive line guy, you understand you're at a distinct advantage in these drills. The reason why is because whenever you do your pass rush moves. As, as an offensive lineman, one of the most important things that you can understand is, is is understanding where your leverage is and where your help is as it pertains to that leverage. So let's say a guy's going to try and come outside you and convert outside speed to inside power on you, right? Um, so they're coming up. If you can just picture somebody coming up this one side of you and getting you moved this way, and as you're moving this way, they're going to try and get you an angle to where they can just rip underneath you and try and come through, right? And, and, and 
most instances, unless they're bringing everybody, unless they're bringing the house, you're going to have a guard inside you that you kind of feel his hip. And whenever he's kind of up next to you, you can, you know what I'm saying? Like you can right. kind of get a three hand technique on this dude. And, you know, then you can get your one hand out to this outside to see if there's anybody coming from the outside. And that's kind of how it works, right? It's like an interplay of these different, these, these, these different spots. Um, when you're doing one-on-one pass rush drills, you don't have any of that stuff. You're on an island just by yourself, right? And so the and, and, and so the defensive lineman doesn't have to worry about your help at all. He he's free. He has and what it was in that specific situation, the outside speed, the inside power. I'm like, dude, people are gonna convert on this guy all day because he's got this. He's got this massive center of gravity. Um, he uh, the the he's he's going to be super easy to get up get up underneath his chest plate and and and, and convert inside on him and he's probably slow footed you know he's probably slow footed and can can't move but the thing is dude he's got a great kick slide and whenever you try to convert outside speed to inside power on Cam Williams you can't do it because he's because his arms are just so long he's like an octopus you know, you just, it's just, you get, you get caught up in it. You know what I'm saying? You, and he'll, yeah. and he'll, and he'll wash you away with it and you're going to be in big trouble. And then I saw him again at, at uh, D Hawks camp at um, uh, Donald Hawkins, ex UT player. He's been on the channel before. He used to come on my show all the time to talk offensive line play. And he's a trainer up there. He actually trains Michael Fasusi, who's the 2025 kid and um, some, some other, you know, he's trained a bunch of guys that come, came, come through Texas and I saw Cam Williams at D-Hawks uh, DFW Battle of the Trenches camp. He won- he wins the MVP of that camp, very obvious MVP of the camp. And um, I was just screaming from night. I was like, dude, why is t- – and I, every time I want to talk to Big Cam, I'm like, hey, man, is Texas calling you? Is Flood calling you? It's like all this stuff. He's like, no, nah, man, I still haven't heard from him. I was just – I was coming to the boards. I'm like, what are they doing? I'm like, this guy's not one of these novelty-type dudes, right? This guy's not a um, – I would have said the 2023 guys are novelty guys. I didn't say they're bad takes because I trust Kyle Flood more than anybody else as far as their evaluations on these players. But I would have told you those guys, there's not much, um, there's not much out, outside of the size, right? With Cam Williams, it, it's like I was talking about the, the the 2016 defensive tackle Kendall Jones. People will, will remember that guy that looked like a cartoon, um, a cartoon football player, right? Just a um he looks like he belongs in a museum or something, you know, uh-huh. where, where people pay to come see him. Right. And but you line him up on a football field, he can't move. You know, like so that's just how it goes. Um, Cam Williams can move. Cam 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 Williams can do like three sixty dunks and stuff. It's like wow. so, um, man. If we just look at last season, Cam Williams. This is why it's important. So Cam Williams played only one hundred and eleven snaps last season. And whenever he did o- o- over those snaps, he either committed a um, let me just look. He commit he he allowed a sack, a hit, a pressure, a run stuff, a TFL, and or committed a penalty four times on 111 snaps. So once every 27.75 snaps, he allowed disruption. That was third worst on the whole team as far as what his disruption allowed was. Even though 27.75 historically for Texas isn't isn't terrible you know um i wonder if i can just kind of can i do a, can i do you care about do a screen share chad no do whatever you need okay so let's just look at the deep dig 2023 so share um is it sh- no not quite showing yet there we go so i'm i'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so people can see it okay okay um, yeah and we can also do that right there okay so the uh so Kelvin Banks is up here at like 41.5. The best ever was Trey Hopkins in his senior season. He allowed disruption once every 57.1 snaps, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you got Connor Williams, Kelvin Banks. I mean, we, we've been over this before. These are all NFL guys. Taylor Doyle is always weird to see up here, but you got Banks. We got D-Hawk, <laughs> who, I, D-Hawk who I talked about earlier. Uh, Angleau probably will be some shot at an NFL guy. McMillan, kind of a bit, a bit of an anomaly, but Shackelford, you know, NFL practice squad, right? Christian Jones, NFL, Derek Kerstetter, NFL practice squad, DJ Campbell, NFL, Cosby, NFL, Kerstetter practice squad, right? It's been, it's been, it's been pretty good. Okay. Cam Williams here. So out of, I've been doing this since 2013. Uh, so 76 total guys that has played over 100 snaps at, at Texas. And Cam Williams last year out of 76 total was number 44 overall. 
So not the best, right, as far as snaps per disruption allowed, okay? But if you look at his grades in the deep dig, so I guess let me explain what, why this is important. His snaps per disruption allowed is not his grades, okay? That is not his grade. That is only me chronicling how often his, his, res his responsibility was either – um, how often how, he gave how, something? How up. should I say it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm trying to say it in, in a more technical way. But how often he gave up a sack, or a, like you, what, what you have to do, what you have to do is identify, identify the concept, right? And once you identify the concept, you can identify the re the responsibility. Once you identify the responsibility, you can assign responsibility for certain acts of disruption that occur. I guess that was what what I was trying to say, right? And also penalties, right? So you can have a good grade and still have kind of a high snaps per disruption if outside of those plays where you allow the disruption, you you grade out with really good snaps, right? Last year, Cam Williams on one, 111 total snaps allowed one run stuff and committed three penalties, okay? But if you look at his, it, which is not good, right? It ends him kind of down here in the bottom, of the team with the Connor Robertsons and the Hayden Connors of the world as far as the snaps per disruption allowed and or penalty caused. Okay. But if you look at it in the context of just his grades, like me grading each play, like how good was this play? How, how, how dominant was this snap? Whatever. But you, if you look at the offensive line grades by week, he's, he, he graded out with a 77.4 versus Kansas state and a 78.64 versus Texas tech. If you look at both the average and the median, of those of, of those of those two, which is the same, of course, because we're only talking about two numbers, but 78.24 is an average, would have been, was third best on the team. So what that tells me is he was giving up a lot of snaps, or he was giving up a lot of disruption per snap and or committing too, too many penalties, but even despite that, he was grading so high. So if the new thing is that he is now getting rid of those mistakes, imagine how much higher the grades could be then. Uh, and, and then mm -hmm. honestly, honestly, um, imagine how much better your life could be if you just if if if, if you started giving the gift of meat, mm -hmm. giving yourself the gift of, of beef. Can 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 you believe it? Texas beef traders, Texas beef traders. You get 10 percent off anything just by telling them that you heard about them here on Orange Bloods Live. And let me tell you this. I took my son to Texas beef, beef traders last Friday. We met some people from Orange Bloods. I usually go in, in, in there on Friday nights, right in the heart of Lakeway. Man, if you guys want to come hang out, grab a beer. It, it's all free. Come out there, grab a beer, have some charcuterie stuff, man. Darren's going to get you set up. Darren's going to get you set up at Texas Beef Traders. And my son, he's just bugging me all the night last night. I say, Dad, are we going back to Texas Beef Traders tomorrow? Dad, well, I'm like, yeah, so we'll go back to Texas Beef Traders. He knows good when he sees it. He knows good when he tastes it. We love Texas Beef Traders. I can't wait to eat. I'm going to eat Texas Beef Traders tonight. Whether I'm having a steak, whether I'm having a burger, whether I'm going to have some tacos, it's going to be Texas Beef Traders. Four dollars for the best pound of ground, best pound of ground beef that you've ever had. I, actually, with, with, with your ten percent off, Chad, was that three dollars and sixty cents? Yeah, three dollars and sixty cents for the best like gourmet ground beef, cheaper ribeyes than any grocery store, much cheaper New York strips. No vaccinations, no inoculations, no dirty shots of stuff that you that you don't want. Just grass fed, grass finished, processed in house, Mason, Texas, straight to your plate, Texas beef traders. And look, if if you can't get into Lakeway to to come come see them, just call up there, talk to Darren, talk to Shay. They'll just bring it to you. They'll just bring it to you. You have no excuse not to go to Texas beef traders. All right, Chad. Um, I, I think we actually. Oh wait, I think we actually had a, had something else here. So let me get this. So here we go. Eric Torres, real estate agent serving all of DFW. Um, you know he's Onwar's uh, great sponsor. I, I, I trust me when Onwar talks about El, El Presidente. I've 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 interacted just like the rest of you with uh, with um, El Presidente here in the chat. You can tell one thing. Let me tell you one thing about El, El Presidente. Very, very, very rich. Very rich. I mean, big time, big time cash this guy makes. You don't make that much cash if you're not real good at this stuff, okay? You've seen the Super Chats. You've seen it. It's like, come on. 
You really think a guy that throws in fifty dollars super chats on, on th- this YouTube show if he's not just doing awesome job for his clients? There's absolutely no way. It's Eric Sales Homes DF- DFW, Eric Torres, uh, real estate agent serving all of DFW. Certainly appreciate them. And Chad, we Chad, we we uh, we appreciate specs too. Thanks to everybody for being in the specs chat line. If you could please remember, uh, it looks like we have no doubt about already a good group in there. Up over two hundred and thirty folks I see that have piled in to the specs chat and uh some good chats coming in uh well, we'll surely that means that we, that, that, that we already have 230 likes right chad uh, oh i'm sure <laughs> come on give us a sure. like <laughs> let's make sure you're hitting that like button like subscribe and get those notifications we do appreciate it just a quick update uh first off jefferson's just got a distinct thought big capital letters don't give a piss about nothing but the horns okay jefferson there you go. Welcome in to Orange Bloods Live. We're talking offensive line to start. We're about to talk receivers as well. Someone else noticed it is backwards hat <laughs> Alex. He's going with the Coach Hurley look. I don't know if you saw Coach Hurley after UConn had to deal with plane trouble. You know when you have plane trouble, Alex, and you just don't care what you look like when you get off the plane? Wow, it, uh, it, 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 right? it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It does, the only thing that matters, there's, 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 there's one thing that matters. Get my butt home. You yeah. know what I'm saying, or or get my butt to where I to where I need to be going. Yeah. So Coach Hurley shows up. This is Final Four press conference, and my man's rocking a backwards hat. Like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Everybody has to deal with it around the holidays. We're here. We're ready to play. I mean, yeah. he was. You could tell he was just worn out. And yes, someone asked. Alex did use the word halcyon on the show. Did I? Okay. It was fantastic. It was. Um, it the, was fantastic. The, the, I, I just go into it. I just go into a trance sometimes while I'm talking, Chad. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But the uh, the um, what, so can you just before we get into the next topic, this is something you can help mm-hmm. me out with. Mm-hmm. Are we gonna um, is Kate is Caitlin Clark gonna get to play the South Carolina girls? If they make the final, yes. Okay, so, they, the final, so they're not gonna they're not gonna play until the finals. That is correct. Tonight if is make it. Tonight is South Carolina, North Carolina State to start, and then Caitlin is taking on Paige Beckers and UConn tonight. So it's Caitlin against Paige tonight. The winner gets South Carolina if South Carolina wins. Is it wild that I'm more interested in the in the girls one than I am the than the the uh, boys one? It's, it's not, just. It's, I mean, not really, Alex. And it's not just you. I saw a deal yesterday. Average the ticket price. Ticket price to get into the men's final four right now is like five hundred and seventy bucks. Average price for the women's like nine fifty. Oh God. Okay. So right. it's, and, okay. and think about it. It's just star power. Like when you say the tournament on the men's side, don't walk up to some you know insane college basketball fan. Just walk up to a random sports fan and say, name a player in this men's tournament that you're really excited to, to watch. They might come up with the big cat from Purdue. They might mention DJ, what's it, DJ, what's his name from uh, NC know. State? I don't know. I was about to say DJ Horn, that's the guard. It's DJ something. I don't even know the guy's name. Um, but the fact that people can rattle off Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers mm-hmm. and Angel Reese and LSU when they were in, my kid, Alex, does not like sports. But I said to her today as she's getting ready to go to school, I remember Caitlin's playing tonight. Oh, really? Caitlin's playing tonight? I mean, yeah. it's that it's that fast. So I'm, I not, I figured I'm not surprised you're more interested. Well, it, I mean, and I think it was just also with me, and, and, and we'll get back to the – I mean – We'll get back to the Texas stuff, but this is Texas related too. Like, I think for me, since my daughter started playing basketball and, you know, she's only what nine, but you know, she it's like her first couple of years playing basketball. So she's just still learning, Mm -hmm. but it's the first time she's kind of had any kind of ability to, um, my son is, my son, he's like around age six. It was just this last year, kind of toward the college football playoff stuff, where I felt like he started to get the ability to kind of sit down and just watch an actual game. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not sure how it was with your kids or whatever, like when they kind of got to that. It feels like this year with my daughter, her going to the Moody Center a bunch with her mom and her friends and, you know, my friend down the street who is their girls basketball coach would take him there and, um, She's just gotten to where she can kind of sit through a, a game. You know what I'm saying? Like sit there, focus on the game, watch the game, cheer with the crowd, get the horns up whenever they shoot free throws. You know what I'm saying? Like be in the game, right? right. This is the first time I'd seen that I've heard. And so I kind of, you know, I, I like that and I want to sort of encourage it. You know, I think it's cool to be able to be a fan of sports and stuff. And so um, 
I wasn't sure if that was the reason why I'd been more into the girls' basketball tournament this year. It probably has something to do with it, I, I, w- I would guess. But it sounds like maybe I'm not special in any kind of way that it's like has to do with my daughter. It's just like there's like 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 these chicks are awesome players, man. It's like it's fun. Yeah. It's it's pretty it's pretty fun, man. It, it's it's going to be good to see. Yeah, um, it's trans. Yeah, it's transcendent. You got star power, and uh, and also just as a side secret, it's better basketball. The ball goes in the basket, it seems, more. Um, at halftime the other night, Alex, I asked myself, wait, it's 45 all. When's the last men's game I watched It was 45 all? Last 12 games in the men's tournament, one game was 45 all or better at the half. That's it. Well, well, and Your I point- also feel like it, and this is a definite tangent but because I don't know anything about basketball. But as somebody that doesn't know anything about basketball, like I don't under, I don't even understand – like. Maybe me talking about maybe people are laughing at at me for for saying this, but I don't understand what like a a three tube zone is. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand really what a pick and roll is. I do you know what I'm saying? Like I know that people right. say this, they're like, but it's like to me, it's like I don't know. They're just running around down there. I I don't understand it. Right? To me, it feels like somebody should just pick one person to guard and they should just guard them. But that's not how it works, right? Um, mm-hmm. but um. Whenever I watch the women's basketball play, I kind of look at it and you can start I, my, my mind starts kind of putting together a little bit about how these plays are sort of set up. Maybe a, a, a little bit different than it is with the men's where it was just a some super awesome dude that just drives to the drives to the hoop and you know tries to get the slam dunk and stuff. Yeah, so, not a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, final four coming up both sides. Obviously, the women play uh, tonight. Everything's ESPN there. Everything is TBS on the men's side, and that is tomorrow. Um, <laughs> we got in. We got in the chat. We got in the chat. Uh, Text ninety four says you're you're not alone, Alex. Yeah, no, nah, you're neither, not. Neither neither does RT. Neither does RT. <laughs> okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh man, Sandman. <laughs> Every now and there then that dude will get me. <laughs> yeah. Sandman, you can change your name, but we know who you are. Well yeah. done. Well <laughs> done. All right. Uh, real quick, let's let Specs give you some love. Get all stocked up for whichever final four you want to watch, or maybe both. Come on. <laughs> You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world-class wines to hard-to-find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets. It's back. Cheers to savings. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming in. Uncle Mickey throwing in. Taylor Swift and women's basketball on a Texas football show. We live in interesting times. Hey, <laughs> there's all kinds of all kinds of stuff out there. Did we talk um, about Taylor Swift? I'm not sure we did. Did we? No, we have not talked about Taylor Swift. Okay. That has not been right. discussed today. Uh, okay. But. Alex, I do think there's uh, there's a few notes that I, we definitely encourage everybody again to get to the war room at orangebloods.com every Thursday night. All kinds of great you know notes and nuggets and everything. And yesterday, I just had this feeling because we have you know some group chats on different things, and one of them is literally just a group chat about the war room. And I'm never really like in the discussion with you guys, but I get to see it. So sometimes I'll get a little excited when one of you says, oh, guys, I got something good tonight. Oh, I got something good tonight. And yesterday I could just feel when when Anwar sent a message, I thought, okay, Anwar's got something, right? Anwar's got some stuff. And then once I read through it, it's a really good war room. We mentioned the Cam Williams stuff. To me, the other thing to focus on if you're a Texas fan is sort of – it's kind of a reality check, but it's about receivers and Quinn Ewers. And so I think there's some notes in there to dig through and definitely go do that. But the name I think that comes out of it, uh, Alex, for me, is Matthew Golden. There's a little note in there from, I believe it was Ketch's note in the war room, about the discussion has been that if there's one guy right now that you'd say Quinn Ewers has become comfortable with, that he's most comfortable with in practice, it's Golden. Of all the guys you and I would have guessed, I don't. Mm-hmm. I think I'd have guessed Golden maybe fifth. Maybe, well, but he, I mean, he's he, he he's not working. He doesn't work out with the ones, and so I mean, the, if we just talk about what the best connect, I I don't understand it, and it's kind of like, and like I talked about earlier. Look, I can't discount it because that's act, actually that was on wars reporting. Um, okay. It was Ketchum later who reported something similar as it pertains, but it, more of a. Uh, we could talk about it, but that is more from a Jonte Cook angle. That's um, true. That's true. The yeah. uh, the. The the point, I guess what the point is, is look, 
I've learned not to doubt Anwar's sources. Okay. They're very good sources. He'll never tell you who they are because he'll lose them, but like they're good. Um, and so, but it's almost kind of like, like to me, it's like they're saying, like, well, who, who do you believe? Like, Anwar's great sources are your, are, are, are your own lying eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, it's, it's like, yeah. I, and I, maybe, I just, maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there's reps going on obviously away from what the media is seeing. But again, when we're talking about the sourcing here, these are sources telling you what's going on in the totality of it. Um, So just kind of something to file away. You referenced the John Tay Cook thing. There's also, I think, a discussion to be had. Catches and catch can expand expand on this in the 12 o'clock show today of what he's hearing. But it sounds, uh, Alex, like it's just a little bit of a, hey, pump the brakes, calm down a bit on John Tay Cook immediately being able to jump up to – Xavier worthy levels. And, and, and that's another thing. It's like, I don't understand it because it, it, like, why would you want to pump the brakes on Jante? He looks like the alpha out there. And well, here, here's the thing. You can't, you, um, you can't, that's okay. So even if he's out there and he's making some mistakes and we've seen him make a few mistakes, right? Even if, even, even if he's out there making some mistakes and doing some stuff like that, Nobody can tell me, they can say to me that's like, hey, well, Alex, you're only out there for five periods of practice. And so you don't know about like, look, five periods of practice is enough to identify. It's like, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a duck's a duck and a, you know, and it quacks mm-hmm. and it walks and it like it does all this stuff. Right. And it goes in the goes in the water and shakes around. It's, you know, it's a duck. You look at Jonte Cook. He's he's an alpha. So it's like I don't think that that changes from period to, to period. Um, I. But I can understand why people who, whenever they, what was the quote from Catch? So from Catch, he said, and look, Catch will be able to expand on this in House Divided with him and Chad. That comes up at noon right here on the channel. So make sure and turn on notifications. Make sure and stick here with it. Uh, Chad and I are going to get out of here right after we discuss this. And it'll be, I'm sure it'll be the top of the mind as far as what Chad and uh, Catch want to discuss on their show. But he said that, um, let's see. One person told me this week that the staff expects more from Jonte Cook than he's given consistently through the first half of camp. Quote, I've seen some people, or I've seen some of the season projections for him, and he's not there yet, one source said. I'm only aware of one set of season, season-long season projections that have been run by, by anybody as far as the, the Texas Longhorns are concerned, certainly this is not out in the prop markets. This is not out in the betting markets. You cannot go and bet on an over-under Jonte Cook, 875.5 yards, or Jonte Cook over-under targets and stuff like that. Those projections were writ, were put up on Orange Bloods, and as we know, the whole Texas staff has Orange Bloods, and those were put up by Cody Carpentier, right? He What, what Cody did was he did just like we do in fantasy – you know he works with, with me at Roster Watch. It's just a natural in, inclination for him to put together projections, right? Yeah. What, a, you're, what you're saying is Cody Carpentier is a troublemaker. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So when, whenever, well, I mean that's kind of true, right? <laughs> kind of true. Um, the projection that he had for Jonte Cook in that deal was 79 receptions for 1,209 yards. Man. So yeah, that's- I, I think that jo- I think let me just say just to put it in perspective that i'm positive is the projection that this person on staff was talking about right there's no other projection no one's running projections that's the reason i know like i said it's a super niche thing Mm -hmm. that fantasy football nerds living down in their mom's basements do right and when you're somebody that does that and you also cover a college football team and you need to create content during the springtime when there, there's not football games going on, you start saying like, well, maybe I could run projections for it. That's Cody stuff that he's looking at. OK, so what he's saying is that's that's 70. He's saying, I'm not sure that we're looking at a guy with 79 receptions on 123 targets for 1209 yards on a 27 point or a 22.78 target share with his nearest competition being Isaiah Bond with literally 20 less catches, literally 400 less yards. I mean, whenever I look at that, I think that that's probably maybe overcooking the grits for Jonte Cook too as far as his yeah. overall share of the offense, right? I But tapping the brakes on the some of the projections I've seen doesn't necessarily mean – you know, I, I 
Ketchum did say that the source had said that they hadn't seen everything that they wanted to out of him this off season. And are you you're left to think, was that in the receiving game? Is that as a as a run blocker? That was an issue with Jonte last year, mm-hmm. right? They said he didn't couldn't get on the field because Chris Jackson wanted to be a better run blocker. There's a million things that that could mean, but I'll tell you what it can't mean. It it can't mean that Jonte Cook is looking like he's not having like he's having a great he's having a great spring, and everybody's going to see it in this in in the spring game. It's like it's it's just it's beyond obvious. Well, Alex, I just think it's about two key words. It's about realistic expectations. And it's not not ever what fans want to talk about. But let's remind them. We are 148 days away from kickoff. 148 from the Colorado State game. Yes, it's 15 days till the spring game. But there's a lot of time left of the season. And Alex, we got to keep reminding ourselves about what they lost at receiver, what Quinn is trying to rebuild here in terms of a comfortability factor, and the John Tay Cook thing, is it fair to ask him to go from eight catches to Xavier Worthy or better? Because that's what people are saying with those projections. And by the way, Alex, I'm in there with Cody Carpentier. I am in that John Tay Cook fan club. I really believe he can do it. Mm-hmm. But when you look at, if you think about it logically, to go from eight to 80, essentially, that's a huge jump. You know what Xavier Worthy caught the year before he caught 75? He caught 60. Do you know how many guys out of Bond, Golden, and Bolden caught 60 last year? None. None of them did. Bond caught 48, 48. Golden caught 38, Bolden yeah. caught 54. So if you're looking for that obvious guy that can go get you 70, 75 catches or better, Alex, I don't know if there's an obvious guy based on production so far. We just have to kind of project it based on what we think is going to happen. So um, it is, I think it's just a good day to take a breath. If you're a Texas fan, try to be realistic about this thing and understand how much work is yet to be done and how, and, and just how little production we've actually seen from these guys. There's a lot that needs to be figured out, but I'm with you. Do not take this as some kind of bag on John Tay Cook. I just think that's somebody saying, hey, wait a second. You're talking about 79 catches? We love the kid. We love him. I don't know if we need to put 79 catches of expectation on him right now. I think well, that's what they're saying. Yeah, look, I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm saying. I got a big expectation for coming right up on the House Divided show. I, I can't wait to hear what Catch says about this. I know. Because, you know, Catch is going to have the backstory about the sources. He's he's, he's going to talk all about it. It's a Friday, Chad. It's time, it's, it's, it's time for us to bust out of here and right. uh, leave him with um, – Leave him with the tease, man, about more Jonte Cook talk upcoming on the House Divided show. That's it. Like, subscribe, get your notifications, then you'll know when House Divided hits. But we will hit today at 12, get you all the latest of what Catch has been uh, been hearing, more War Room stuff on all of it as Texas gets a little closer to the spring game. Thank you all for supporting us here at Orange Bloods Live. Have a good Friday. Backward For backwards hat, Alex. (laughs) See ya.